Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrei. Today we'll talk about hugging face and table query model. I'll show uh, how we managed to uh, use uh, table query model and uh, run basic queries uh, against uh, CSV data. And the uh, application is live, available on hugging face pieces, so you can go and try it out. Uh, there, are, th th there is a sample a CSV file with sample queries but you can upload your own CSV file and uh, run your own queries. So let's see how it works. And okay, so this is um, Hugging Face Spaces uh, environment. And uh, I'm using uh, Gradio um, framework uh, to wrap um, uh, functionality which uh, calls um, uh, table query model available on Hugging Face. Uh, originally this uh, model was developed by Google and it was uh, imported to uh, Hugging Face environment uh, and uh, pre-trained model is available uh, to anyone. Also, you could fine-tune this model uh, if you'd like to. Uh, there's a step-by-step -step documentation. But first, let's let's see how it runs and uh, what it does. Uh, and uh, I should mention that this pre-trained model, uh, it doesn't support like uh, lots of um, uh, data, uh, big CSV file. Uh, it runs with uh, CSV file I think 64 rows uh, and 32 columns. If you try to fit a larger CSV file, it would return the error saying that uh, too many rows and, and so on. Uh, but I believe you could uh, initiate, uh, uh, create a new model and train it uh, with your own uh, use cases and with your own data to support a larger set of rows. But on the other hand, uh, maybe 64 rows is enough because you could, if you have a large CSV file, you can split it into batches and you could execute the same query multiple times against uh, a multiple set of batches and uh, from each batch you would get a uh, result and then you could co concatenate this results uh, uh, in the final uh, result set uh, to get information about the entire set of information. Okay, and the way it works, uh, yeah, you could uh, you can find this application in uh, Hugging Face Spaces, search for table query, and below the video, I'll, I'll uh, give you the URL also, so you could go directly to the application. You can upload your own file uh, and provide your own query, but uh, here, for simplicity, I'll use uh, the sample uh, data. For example, I, if I select the first entry, and taxable CSV file is packaged together with the application, and it runs on spaces. And this is a query, uh, what are the items with total higher than eight? And in Gradio, this, um, I didn't found a way to display uh, input data before a request was, is submitted. So actually I display the input data after the request is processed so that it's easier to understand the context of the query and to understand if this query is correct, a result of the query is correct or not. So what we see here is um, in the results that we have a query which we were using and we got uh, four items in the result set and this is the uh, data from CSV, uh, entire set of data. So we can see uh, which items uh, with total higher than eight. So for example, that pool DVD is uh, 16, uh, then uh, fruit of the loom is 857 uh, and so on. So uh, we can see four items are returned correctly. This means uh, table query model, it not only works with the text, uh, not it not only understands like a text uh, relationship, but it also understands number numbers and it can uh, query the data and return uh, values that are higher or, or lower than a certain value and uh, uh, in combination of with text uh, related uh, analysis. So this this quite this is great and uh, I think it can cover uh, quite a lot of uh, use cases with basic SQL. Let's see another example. What is the cost for maxful items? So in this example, we'll look for a specific name and uh, we return a uh, value that belongs to this uh, uh, item, uh, specifically cost. And we got 728, and this is the, uh, the correct example, uh, correct, correct results, 7.28. And the third one uh, is more tricky. Uh, here in this query, we, we check uh, for the cost lower than two, uh, but for the tax higher than uh, 005. So we have kind of intersection of two columns. And this result is not 100% correct. Uh, one item is correct, uh, correctly returned, second uh, item is not correct. So we can see that uh, while model works great, uh, but still 
we this it's not deterministic so we cannot rely 100 percent cases that the result will be always correct so secret anti-perspirant uh it's 129 so it's lower than two uh and higher than 005 this one is correct and for first uh entry loading little uh league baseball uh this one is not correct because cost is higher than two uh, but tax uh, is correct. It's, um, no, we can see that cost is 2.97, which is higher than 2, so this is incorrect. And uh, tax is 0 0.22, which is uh, higher than, than 0 0.05. This is correct, but the first condition was not met, and still that was included into the result set. So probably if you would like to run this model on your own set, uh, you should uh, uh, check based on the test data how well it performs. If you see uh, there are issues, then you can do fine tuning and uh, uh, tuned model better to run on your own use cases. But uh, from the first two examples, we saw that pre-trained model works already well, already very well with uh, out of the box uh, with any kind of data. Uh, but if you want to improve it for your own use cases, you can do fine tuning. Then on spaces, on hugging face spaces, you can go to files and versions. And the way uh, application works, I just uh, pushed all the code from my local to uh, Hugging Face Spaces and uh, in uh, app.pi uh, in Python script, um, this is the initialization code, which is initializing um, um, Gradio application. And then <clears throat> Hugging Face Spaces knows how to start the application and so on. But all the code uh, is available uh, here next to the application in, in files and uh, versions section. So if I would open the script, I would see that uh, over here I have description and so on, and I'm starting radio interface, and I'm pointing to execute query function, which comes from another script, from Tapas script. I just made this kind of, uh, I decided to put um, table query model related logic in a separate script, just for better readability. And if you go over here, then uh, this uh, input file and yeah, this app folder and this is tapas scripts and we're using a uh, tensorflow uh, pre-trained model and executing uh, prediction getting back the answers and getting back the results and uh, returning to the to the user interface and all this code i, I just took from documentation and we can go and uh, see where the model is documented uh, is documented so uh, we would go <clears throat> we can search for Tapas <clears throat> and under Transformers section, we would look for, no, this is, I think, the API, uh, API section, and let's look for for supported models. And over here, let's look for uh, tapas. This is the uh, information about Tapas model, uh, explanation how it's, uh, it, it's trained and so on. And if you scroll down, <clears throat> this uh, information how to fine tune the model, uh, train, and this is the inference, uh, the section which I was using to invoke the model from my own application so using TensorFlow. And this is exactly the same code that I am using in uh, Hugging Face Spaces. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's, uh, I think it's, it's quite interesting example. And it shows that um, uh, basically ML can uh, process not only uh, text, which is uh, in paragraphs or paragraphs or sections or sentences, but it can work also with uh, tabular data. And it might be very useful, uh, in my opinion, for in, in the situations when data is dynamic and you uh, cannot create just a table for uh, for each set of data. And data is coming uh, frequently and uh, number of columns and is different, so you cannot define a table. And there are different types of columns, different uh, uh, attributes and so on. So then instead of uh, loading data into the database, you could uh, use uh, Tapas model and process the data quickly, just in memory with ML and return back the, the results. So this would simplify the uh, 
uh, entire application flow uh, quite a lot. And hopefully in future, this, model, this kind of models will be developed more and more and there'll be more improvement and they'll be more advanced and they'll be able to handle more complex uh, use cases. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.